Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 8. Ellen Holly, a trailblazer in television and champion of diversity. Ellen Holly, an esteemed American actress and a pioneering figure in daytime television, passed away on December 5, 2023, at the age of 92. Holly's career spanned several decades during which she broke significant racial barriers and became a symbol of change and diversity in the entertainment industry. Holly's journey in acting began on the stage, with notable appearances in Broadway productions like Tiger Tiger Burning Bright and A Hand Is On The Gate. Her transition to television and film marked a historic moment in 1968 when she joined the cast of ABC's soap opera, One Life to Live, as Carla Grayhall, becoming the first African-American actress in a leading role on daytime TV. This achievement was not just a personal milestone but a significant leap forward for representation in the media. Her role in One Life to Live was groundbreaking, not only for its duration from 1968 to 1980, and again from 1983 to 1985, but also for the way it tackled issues of race and identity. Holly's personal life was as rich and diverse as her professional one. Of African, English, French, and Shinnecock native heritage, she was a proud member of the Delta Sigma Theta sorority. Her relationships, including those with co-star Roger Hill and Harry Belafonte, were detailed in her candid 1996 autobiography, One Life, the Autobiography of an African-American Actress. Ellen Holly's impact on the entertainment industry extends far beyond her roles. She was a vocal advocate for diversity and representation, paving the way for future generations of actors of color. Her legacy is one of resilience, talent, and unwavering commitment to breaking down racial barriers in Hollywood. Tribute to Ellen Holly. Number 7. David McKnight, a stalwart talent in African-American film and television. David McKnight, an actor celebrated for his dynamic roles in black exploitation cinema and television, passed away at the age of 87 due to cancer in Las Vegas. His journey in the world of acting left an indelible mark on the industry, showcasing his versatility and profound impact on African-American representation in the arts. Born in Mound Bayou, Mississippi on July 2, 1936, McKnight discovered his passion for acting in Chicago, where he moved with his family at a young age. His early foray into acting was at Wendell Phillips Academy High School, followed by studies at Wilson Junior College. McKnight's diverse background included service in the U.S. Army and a stint as a police officer, experiences that enriched his approach to acting. McKnight's breakout role came in 1970 with the pioneering all-black TV soap opera Bird of the Iron Feather. He gained further acclaim in the cult classic J.D.'s Revenge, 1976, where he portrayed a deceased hustler in a performance that remains memorable to this day. His ability to bring depth and nuance to such a complex character exemplified his talent. Beyond film, McKnight was a familiar face on television, gracing shows like Kojak, Hill Street Blues, and The Incredible Hulk. His versatility was further showcased in collaborations with Robert Townsend, notably in Hollywood Shuffle and The Five Heartbeats, where he played roles that resonated deeply with audiences. David McKnight's career was characterized by a steadfast commitment to his craft and a unique ability to bring authenticity to his roles. His legacy as a significant African-American actor in both film and television endures, inspiring future generations with his dedication and talent. Tribute to David McKnight Number 6. Keisha Nash Whitaker, A Life of Beauty, Ambition, and Love Keisha Nash Whitaker, an actress and entrepreneur known for her marriage to Forrest Whitaker and her creative ventures, passed away at the age of 51. Her death, confirmed by her youngest daughter True Whitaker, 
has left a void in the lives of her family, friends, and admirers. While the cause of her passing was not immediately disclosed, her legacy continues to shine through her work and her family. Keisha's journey into the limelight began when she met Forrest Whitaker on the set of the 1994 film Blown Away, where she played his character's girlfriend. Their on-screen chemistry blossomed into real-life love, leading to their marriage in 1996 in Montego Bay, Jamaica. The couple shared two daughters, True and Sonnet Noel, and were also parents to children from previous relationships Ocean and Autumn. Beyond her role as a supportive partner and loving mother, Keisha was a woman of ambition and creativity. She founded Kissable Couture, a luxury cosmetics line, showcasing her entrepreneurial spirit and passion for beauty. In a 2008 interview with O, The Oprah Magazine, Keisha emphasized her commitment to both her business and her family, balancing her professional aspirations with her role as a mother. Keisha's strength and influence extended beyond her business ventures. In a 2009 interview, Forrest Whitaker acknowledged her as the stronger parent, the anchor in their children's lives. This testament to her character highlights the profound impact she had on those around her. Keisha Nash Whitaker's life was a beautiful blend of personal achievements and deep familial bonds. Her passing marks the loss of a remarkable woman who navigated the worlds of entertainment, business, and family with grace and strength. Her memory will continue to inspire and guide those who knew her and admired her journey. Tribute to Keisha Nash Whitaker. Number 5. Benjamin Zephaniah, a multifaceted luminary of literature and performance. Benjamin Zephaniah, a revered writer, poet, and actor known for his role in Peaky Blinders, passed away at the age of 65 after a battle with a brain tumor. His death, confirmed through a statement on his Instagram account, has left the literary and entertainment world in mourning. Born and raised in Hansworth, Birmingham, to a Barbadian postman and a Jamaican nurse, Zephaniah overcome early challenges, including dyslexia and leaving school at 13 without the ability to read or write. He moved to London at 22 and published his first book, Pen Rhythm, marking the beginning of an illustrious career that spanned various genres and mediums. Zephaniah's work was deeply rooted in dub poetry, a Jamaican style of performance poetry that he brought into British living rooms. His influence extended beyond poetry, as he authored five novels and a successful book for children, Talking Turkeys, reflecting his versatility and appeal across different age groups. His acting prowess was showcased in the BBC drama series Peaky Blinders, where he played Jeremiah Jimmy Jesus across six series. Despite his success, Zephaniah remained true to his principles, famously rejecting an OBE in 2003 due to its association with the British Empire's history of slavery. His life was marked by a commitment to issues like racial abuse in education, often reflected in his outspoken nature and writings. Zephaniah's musical talent was also notable, particularly with the release of his album Rasta, which included a tribute to Nelson Mandela. His guest editorship of an edition of BBC Radio 4's Today program and nominations for several prestigious awards further highlight his broad impact. Tributes from colleagues and admirers, including Michael Rosen, Adjoa Ando, Cillian Murphy, and Billy Bragg underline Zephaniah's significance as a cultural icon. His legacy as a pioneer in literature, performance, and social advocacy will continue to inspire and resonate with generations to come. Tribute to Benjamin Zephaniah. Number 4. Jane Wodening, an intrepid spirit in film and literature. Jane Wodening, a figure of remarkable versatility and creativity, passed away on November 17th at her home in Denver at the age of 87. Best known for her collaboration with avant-garde filmmaker Stan Brackage and her later success as an author, Wodening's life was a testament to artistic dedication and a fearless embrace of the unconventional. Wodening's journey in the arts began alongside her then-husband, Stan Brackage, one of the 20th century's most influential experimental filmmakers. 
Her contributions to his work were substantial, appearing in many of his films that broke conventional boundaries. She was the star of several of Brackhage's acclaimed works, including Window Water Baby Moving and Wedlock House and Intercourse. These films, characterized by their deep personal touch and abstract narrative style, brought a new dimension to experimental cinema. After their divorce in 1987, Wodening embarked on a singular journey. She traveled across the country in a modified Honda Civic, an experience she later chronicled in her book Drive About. Her writings from this period and beyond reveal a voice that is engaging, humorous, and profound, marking a stark contrast to the abstract nature of her ex-husband's films. Wodening's literary works, including her memoir Living Up There and Wolf Dictionary, reflect her deep connection with nature and her keen observations of life. Wodening's impact on both the world of experimental film and literature is indelible. As a muse, collaborator, and later as an author, she charted a course that was uniquely hers, inspiring many with her intrepid spirit and deep connection to the world around her. Tribute to Jane Wodening Number 3 Silly Dartel, a cherished figure in Dutch broadcasting and theater. Silly Dartel, a renowned Dutch radio and television presenter and actress, passed away on December 6 due to complications from lung cancer. Dartel, best known for her long-standing role as the presenter of the program Hart van Nederland from 1996 to 2012, and Show News, leaves behind a legacy of significant contributions to Dutch broadcasting and theater. Dartel's career in the arts began in theater, where she performed from 1974 to 1990. She was involved with various cabaret groups and theater companies, including Cabaret Nar, showcasing her versatile talent. Dartel also made a mark in musical theater, playing a leading role in the Annie M. G. Schmidt musical The Perpetrator Did It, and appearing in the renowned musical Grease. In addition to her theatrical pursuits, Dartel was a familiar voice in commercials, cartoons, and documentaries. Her transition to journalism in 1990 added another facet to her career. She dabbled back into acting with a guest role in the Vara police series, Bureau Kruslan, in 1992. Dartel's broadcasting career included working on cultural radio programs on Radio 1 and Radio 2 and creating television programs for the Avaro until 1996. Dartel's move to commercial broadcasting marked a significant phase in her career, where she became a household name through her work with SBS 6, presenting Hart van Nederland and Show News. She also used her creativity to devise and produce musical specials. Her final television role was as a presenter of the program Studio Max Live from January 2013 to May 2014. Silly Dartel's impact on Dutch entertainment and journalism will be remembered for her dynamic presence both on stage and on screen. Her contributions to the arts and broadcasting have left an indelible mark on the industry and the audiences she touched. Tribute to Silly Dartel. Number two, Vic Davalillo, a legacy of grace and skill in Major League Baseball. Vic Davalillo, a revered figure in Major League Baseball, known for his exceptional skills as an outfielder, passed away at the age of 84. His journey through baseball, beginning in his native Venezuela and culminating in a celebrated MLB career, leaves an enduring legacy of athleticism and dedication. Davalillo's professional career began in 1958 when he signed with the Reds as a relief pitcher. However, his true calling was in the outfield, a transition that the Cleveland Indians recognized and acted upon. After a stint in AAA, he made his big league debut in 1963. In 1964, just a year after his MLB debut, Davalillo's talent was recognized with a Gold Glove Award. His career trajectory continued to ascend as he became an All-Star in 1965 earning MVP votes thanks to his impressive .301 batting average and 26 stolen bases. 
His offensive performance varied in the following years, but he remained a consistent presence in the outfield for Cleveland. Davalillo's journey through MLB saw him playing for various teams, including the Angels, Cardinals, Pirates, A's, and Dodgers. His adaptability and skill made him a valuable player, contributing to pennant-winning teams with the Pirates, A's, and Dodgers. He was a pivotal member of the 1971 Pittsburgh and 1973 Oakland teams that clinched the World Series. Throughout his 16-season MLB career, Davalillo achieved a .279 batting average, hit 36 home runs, surpassed 1,100 hits, and stole 125 bases. His accolades, a gold glove, all-star selection, and two World Series championships, speak volumes of his multifaceted talent and contribution to the sport. Vic Davalillo's passing marks the end of an era in baseball history. His legacy, characterized by graceful fielding, strategic hitting, and an unyielding spirit, will continue to inspire future generations of baseball players and fans. Tribute to Vic Davalillo. Today's top headlines. News 1. In a tragic turn of events, three people were killed and one injured in a shooting at the University of Nevada Las Vegas campus. The suspect, a former college professor in his 60s, was shot and killed by responding officers, eliminating any further threat to the community. Identified by sources as Anthony Tony Polito, the gunman had connections to Georgia and North Carolina and was reportedly rejected for a recent job application at UNLV. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, led by Sheriff Kevin McMahill, rushed to the scene after receiving the first call about the active shooter at 11.45 a.m. The attack originated on the fourth floor of Beam Hall. In addition to the fatalities, one person was hospitalized in stable condition while four others suffered panic attacks. Two officers also sustained minor injuries during the campus search. News 2. Peter Simon, a 54-year-old from New Hampshire, has been ordered held without bail following a devastating crash in Waltham, Massachusetts that resulted in the deaths of a police officer and a utility worker. During the chaotic incident, Simon, driving a stolen Ford F-150, collided with multiple vehicles, including a police detail and a national grid crew at a gas leak site. This horrific crash claimed the lives of 58-year-old Waltham police officer Paul Tracy and 36-year-old national grid worker Roderick Jackson, and injured two other national grid employees. Simon's rampage continued as he brandished a knife at an officer and stole a police cruiser, leading to a high-speed chase through Waltham before crashing and being apprehended. He faces 15 charges, including manslaughter, armed robbery, and assault with a dangerous weapon. Witnesses described the scene as horrifying and traumatizing. Simon appeared in court with visible injuries, remaining silent as a not guilty plea was entered on his behalf. A packed courtroom of police officers and victims' family members witnessed his arraignment. News 3. Miroslawa Krajewska Malczewska, a celebrated Polish actress known for her work in theater, film, television and dubbing, has passed away at the age of 83 on December 6. Born on September 11, 1940 in Warsaw, Krajewska Malczewska graduated from the Warsaw Academy of Dramatic Arts at 22 and initially joined the ensemble of the Silesian Theater in Katowice. She later moved to the Dramatic Theater in Warsaw, where she remained until 1997. Her film debut was in Jack Blake Kochana, alongside Barbara Kraftowna and Zbigniew Sibolski. Additionally, she was a renowned dubbing artist, lending her voice to productions like The Flintstones, Scooby-Doo, Madagascar, and Avatar, The Legend of Korra. News 4. The literary world mourns the loss of acclaimed Cuban writer Edmundo Desnoé, known for his novel, Memories of Underdevelopment, a pivotal work that captures the turmoil and alienation of a Cuban intellectual during the revolution. Desnoé passed away in New York in 2023, leaving behind a legacy of profound cultural impact. Originally titled Inconsolable Memories in its first English edition, his novel was adapted into a seminal Cuban film in 1968 by director Tomás Gutiérrez Alea. 
Desnoy was a prominent figure in Cuban literature and journalism during the 1960s and 1970s, contributing to La Revolution newspaper and holding editorial positions at the Editorial Nacional de Cuba and El Instituto del Libro. He was also a member of the editorial board of Casa de las Americas and a professor of cultural history. Residing in New York City since 1979, Desnoe continued to enrich the literary world with essays, short stories, art reviews, poetry, and several novels. News 5. Dave Wehrmeister, a former Major League Baseball pitcher, had a career spanning six seasons from 1976 to 1985, with a modest presence in the majors. A standout at Lyons Township High School, Wehrmeister was a varsity baseball letter winner before being drafted by the San Diego Padres as their first round pick in the 1973 MLB draft. Making his major league debut with the Padres in 1976, Wehrmeister spent the next few years moving between the majors and the minors. Wehrmeister's most successful season came in 1985 with the Chicago White Sox, where he achieved his best ERA of 3.43 and recorded two major league wins and two saves. He ended his professional baseball career with the Buffalo Bisons in 1986. Wehrmeister's career, characterized by perseverance and brief stints in the major league, reflects the challenging nature of professional baseball. News 6. In a heartbreaking turn of events, 18-year-old Jeremy Medina, a promising high school baseball player from Gainesville High School in Georgia, has been declared brain dead following an accident during practice. On November 20th, Medina was accidentally struck in the head by a bat while leaning into a batting cage net, a blow that left him in a coma. The school's principal, Jamie Green, emphasized that the incident was a tragic accident, with no horseplay or misconduct involved. The news of Medina's condition was shared with his teammates in a private meeting, leaving the school community in shock. Counselors have been provided to support grieving students. The medical team at Northeast Georgia Medical Center, led by Dr. Michael Cormican, confirmed that the severity of the head trauma made recovery impossible. In a selfless act, Medina's family has decided to donate his organs. This tragic incident has deeply affected the local community, uniting them in grief and prayer. News 7. Mary Willis, an award-winning Austin mystery writer known for her vivid storytelling and passion for literature, passed away at 81 due to complications from dementia. Writing under the pen name Mary Willis Walker, she garnered critical acclaim, winning the Agatha Award for her first mystery Zero at the Bone in 1991 and the Edgar Award for The Red Scream in 1995. Remembered by her daughter Amanda for her ecstatic, fervent literacy, Willis was an avid reader and encouraged her children to explore complex ideas through books. Born in Fox Point, Wisconsin, Willis had a lively childhood filled with reading and outdoor adventures. Willis married Lee Walker, the first president of what became Dell Technologies, and continued to publish under Mary Willis Walker, even after their divorce. A woman of the world, she traveled extensively, visiting places like Egypt, Mexico, Israel, France, and Uzbekistan. Number one, Noel Kinsella, a distinguished career in Canadian politics and academia. Noel Kinsella, a respected Canadian politician and former Speaker of the Senate of Canada, passed away on December 6th at the age of 84. His life was marked by significant contributions to Canadian politics, academia, and public service, reflecting a deep commitment to his nation and its values. Born in St. John, New Brunswick, Kinsella's educational journey was both extensive and impressive. He earned a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology from University College in Dublin, Ireland. His dissertation titled Toward a Theory of Personality Development, a study of the works of Eric H. Erickson, showcased his intellectual depth. Kinsella's academic career spanned over four decades as a professor at St. Thomas University, where he also served on the Board of Governors. His dedication to human rights was evident in his role as chair of the Atlantic Human Rights Center. His political career began with his appointment to the Senate of Canada on September 12, 1990, by then Prime Minister Brian Mulroney representing New Brunswick. A member of the Progressive Conservative Party, he later joined the Conservative Party in 2004. Kinsella served as Opposition Whip, Deputy Leader of the Opposition in the Senate, and ultimately as Leader of the Opposition in the Senate. His tenure as Speaker of the Senate 
from 2006 to 2014, was a testament to his leadership and respect among his peers. Known for his bilingualism, Kinsella actively used French in parliamentary sessions. Noel Kinsella's legacy in Canadian politics and academia is marked by his unwavering dedication to public service, his intellectual contributions, and his commitment to upholding the principles of democracy and human rights. Tribute to Noel Kinsella.